welcome you everybody. Thanks for tuning in to another video. I got my good friend Dan here. Hello. <laughs> and today I just brought him on to hopefully just be able to talk with him, go through a couple of things that you know he's been working on, things that he's done in his life. But first I have a question for him. What is your favorite show on Netflix right now for those under the age of 18 and those over the age of 18? Nice. Um, I'll go real young since my little guy Lewis is two years old. Um, he loves PJ Masks. PJ Masks. And he wants to be Captain. Uh, for me, um, I don't fully endorse that you watch it, but I got sucked in, chewed up and spit out by Tiger King this week. It's so insane. Yes, a little bit of vulgar language, but my goodness, it is a different show. Right. Never seen anything like it. <laughs> All right, well that's good. That's good. Well, we're going to go ahead and jump into a couple of questions. If you don't know, this is the man who started Timber Coffee, if I'm correct. Is that correct? Yeah. My idea, um, Youth for Christ, the organization I work with, kind of their vacuum, their baby, they're technically the owner and employer of Timber. Cool. So why did you start Timber? Yeah. Uh, plainly said, I wanted Timber Coffee to be a place for community in Sylvan Lake. Um, our organization in Timber. We typically just go into high schools, middle schools, and run drop-in centers or young moms programs, which are all awesome. But in my heart, it was just burning. There's a different way that we can maybe approach this thing. A different way that we can interact with more kids than we usually do, and get more adults and different generations involved in the lives of the team. And, and what would you say the goal of Timber is? Just to make it really clear, what's the goal of Timber? Yeah, just having that safe space for youth and young adults. Um, and ultimately, we can get to know them as staff and youth workers and just share life. Because I believe that's the heart of Christianity and our faith, yeah. is to walk life together uh, towards Jesus. Yeah, if you've never been to Timber, I highly suggest it. I am there often. So if you ever come to the church looking for me, I'll probably, and I'm not there, check Timber. Because I'm yeah. probably there. Because that's where the youth hang out. So they've, they've been meeting in this vision that they've been talking about. So, question for you about that though. What did it take to turn your dream into a reality? Yeah, great question. Um, firstly, tons of prayer. Um, just making sure you're not doing what you think God's asking you to do or what you just want to do. Just really going to the Lord and saying, how do we honor you in this process? Is this wise? Is this responsible? And for a not-for-profit organization, uh, those questions are really big. So we had a lot of conversations about using our resources carefully and uh, does this advance the kingdom of God. So yeah, lots of meetings, lots of prayer. Yeah, because a lot of people watch it. We all, they all have, we all have dreams that we want to see happen. And taking those dreams and stepping further can be tough. So that makes me want to ask you the question. Did you have hesitations? Because no one in Youth Unlimited had ever done this before in your organization. This was yeah. a brand new idea. What were your hesitations in stepping up? Yeah, definitely that. It's just like, am I ready for this? Am I capable of doing this? I don't have experience in ever working at a coffee shop or owning or running a business. Youth for Christ doesn't have any hands-on, like this is what we've done in Vancouver or Toronto. <laughs> this was just, let's figure this out. And then also, is Sylvan ready for this? Do the youth want this? Mm -hmm. um, and I think with any business, secular or not-for-profit, you just kind of throw something out and you hope that people will love what you produce or the space that you have. Yeah. So I, I was hesitant for all those areas. I'm not ready, Youth for Christ maybe isn't ready, and is Sylvan even ready? Totally. And were there people opposed to this idea? Yeah, I think, um, people in my circles were very supportive, just straight up to answer the question. However, a good team player and a well-rounded team has people that see your blind spots and maybe the areas you're unaware of. So for me, I can see the 30,000 foot view of what it could be and they'll see the 1,000 foot view of, oh, have you thought about your bank processing, your payment terminal, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great to have those people. Who are slightly, maybe not against you, right. but are there to see a different angle. Yeah, and ultimately we, we all want to see this thing succeed. And if you just don't answer or ignore those questions, it's, it's going to bite you in the butt. Totally. And was there a point in your life 
where you had to recognize the difference between a team player who was looking to help fill the holes mm -hmm. and someone who was just completely opposed and just saying this is really bad idea, though yeah. there are so many people on board. Yeah. Was there a process of being able to tell those people apart and for people who have dreams to be able to see those people in their life? The one who's actually trying to help patch the hole and the one who's trying to throw the idea out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd say at first, because I'd never done anything like this before, it, it felt like a personal attack. Yeah. But as I kind of went through the process and matured and saw the value that they added to the dialogue and the conversation, I realized I needed them to be a part of it. So my encouragement would be this. If you're new at dreaming or if you've never stepped out of the box, um, maybe be careful who you share it with. And what I mean by that is share it with people that you know are dreamers and visionary and, and like new businesses. Um, and that'll just keep you encouraged. And it's not that the other people don't have a place, but if you're just like learning to like imagine what that would be like, do it with people who will allow you to dream. Mm -hmm. Thanks, yeah, that's really good. So the final question that I have for you is, is this. In the Bible, in James 2, it talks about faith without works is dead. And you earlier, though they haven't heard yet, you gave a really good analogy and a breakdown of what that means and how that actually ties in to the dreams that we have. Can you just explain that? Yeah, so we were talking about this passage. and um, So what's the connection between faith and works and life and death? And I think that for timber to be born, it didn't just get there by accident. It had to be dreamt, and there had to be this exchange of life from the spiritual or theoretical to the material and practical. Um, so I think it's got to start somewhere, and it has to start in, in the imagination. And we were just chatting. It's like um, wanting to get a pet. Me and my wife have been talking about getting a dog, and I'm way, way more for it right now, and she's way more opposed. But if I wanted a dog but never bought a dog, that dream is essential. Like, I can keep it in my heart, but it'll never be fully realized unless I act on it. So, yeah, there comes a point where your faith, your good intention, your great idea just has to be put into to work, but it's got to be made in prayer, it should be vetted, it should be a wise decision. Well, that's really good. I don't think I've got anything else to ask you other than to say thanks so much for coming on and letting people hear some of your great wisdom and, and really getting to see a guy who looks at faith and has dreams and then he acts on them. And he's got stuff in the works now that he's in ready to tell us. But no, guys, this is a good man to spend some time with and I suggest you all stop in at Timber to glean some wisdom. Anyways, thanks guys for tuning in. Have a good one. Thanks, Mike.